Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. We're barely into this book, I promise. I know it seems like a lot of stories, but we're maybe one-fifth of the way through? Yeah, they're a whole lot shorter. Like I've stated before, this book actually has two-minute stories in it. But a lot of them don't have closure. So this is another installment of Bedtime Tales by Linda Jennings, illustrated by... Hilda Offen. Let's start with The Man in the Moon. The Man in the Moon was lonely. He lived so far away that no one had visited him for a very long time. Then one day he saw a tiny speck in the sky. It grew bigger and bigger and then zoom it landed plonk on the moon. Plonk? Plonk. P-L-O-N-K. Interesting. Ouch! exclaimed the man in the moon. You've landed on my tummy. Oh. Sorry, said a voice, and a white-clad figure climbed out of the rocket. Welcome to my home, said the man in the moon. Perhaps you'd care for some refreshment. Yes, please, said the spaceman. I've come a long way. So the man in the moon and the spaceman sat down to a splendid meal of green cheese and moondrops. Okay, tummy, green cheese, moon drops. I like that top hat. The top hat's nice, though. Yeah. I'm, I'm confused. Well, the whole the moon is made of cheese. Though, okay, how can the spaceman be without his helmet because it's space? Also, the man in the moon. How did the spaceship land on his tummy? Because if you look at the size of the man in the moon in the second picture... The rocket can't possibly. Yeah, I have issues. I, I mean, I have issues <laughs> with this story. <laughs> yes. Oh, we're back. Whoa, three Aesop fables in a row? I think it's what happened last time. Probably. The last time we did Aesop fables in this book, not the last time we read the book. The Leopard and the Fox. The Leopard is a very beautiful creature with his yellow coat and black spots. The leopard thought so, too. thought he was twice as handsome as the king of the jungle and was far too proud to associate with all the other animals and birds. Soon everybody was tired of his boasting. One day a fox was passing by while the leopard was admiring himself in a pool. It's all very well to be handsome, remarked the fox, but in the end, it's brains that count. For beauty, after all, is only skin deep. Wow, these are so summarized. Art's nice, though. Mm -hmm. The Ass and the Frogs One day, an ass, with a huge load on his back, stumbled and fell into a bog. Help! cried the ass. Let me out of this horrible, smelly place. And he brayed and brayed. Some frogs, who lived in the bog, heard his loud cries and said to him, You've only been in this bog for a few minutes. Why are you making such a fuss? How would you feel if you'd been here as long as we have? Which goes to show that only familiarity makes things acceptable to us. Ah, that one needed to be longer. Oh, yeah. Also, you're different species and have different needs. Yeah. Okay, apparently this one got all the length. Let's see if it's long enough. Yeah. The bees, the drones, and the wasp. The bees and the drones were arguing about who had made the honeycomb deep in the hollow tree. The quarrel became so serious that they decided to take the case to Judge Wasp. The judge thought about the problem very carefully, for he had a difficult task before him. Both the bees and the drones looked very similar, and it was therefore impossible to decide who were the rightful owners of the honeycomb. Then the judge made a decision. He asked the bees and the drones each to build a hive. I can then tell who owns the honeycomb by the shape of the cells and the taste of the honey. The bees agreed immediately, but the drones refused. It's very clear to me, said Judge Wasp, that the bees built the honeycomb, and I declare them the rightful owners. The drones all flew away and made it their business never to show themselves before the wise judge again. So, always judge a person by his actions, rather than his words. That one was better, but interesting. Also, what's the difference between a drone and a bee? 
the drones are males, so I'm assuming they left off the word worker. Because the worker bees are the females that do all the work. I think they're also called drones, though. They're worker bees. I always thought the males were drones, the females were worker bees, and the queen was the queen. Yeah, well, I could always look it up later. The magical birthday cake. Ooh. It was John's birthday, and his mother had asked a magician to his party. At first, the magician did all the usual tricks. Rabbits appeared out of top hats and coins from behind children's ears. But John, who was very spoiled, soon became bored. That's easy, he scoffed. Bet you can't do real magic. Try me, said the magician, annoyed. I bet you can't make my birthday cake grow as big as a house, said John, who was also very greedy. The magician waved his wand. And suddenly, the birthday cake began to grow and grow. Very soon, it was as big as the table, but still it grew. It flattened all the cookies and sandwiches, made the table tilt over. John was very frightened. Stop it, he yelled, at once. Now, there were two things the magician didn't like. One was spoiled and greedy little boys. The other was being bossed around. So he swirled his wand and the cake stopped growing and started to shrink instead. It grew smaller and smaller until it was no bigger than a marble. Stop, wailed John, but it was too late. The birthday cake had shrunk into nothing at all. All its lovely creamy topping, its seven candles, and its marzipan railway engine had disappeared completely. You really are a magician breathed the other children as the magician swept from the room. I like the magician. Yes. He's a fun guy I like to meet. Art's nice, too. He's got all the usual stuff, as the story said. He's got a pigeon on his shoulder. He's got the rabbit he's pulled out of his top hat. He's got his top hat. He's holding a magic wand. He's got all of those handkerchiefs, you know, the kind they usually pull out of their sleeves or stuff into their sleeves. And two eggs. I don't remember eggs, but hey... <laughs> The mystery pet. Hmm. Dean's puppy needed an injection, so Dean took it to the vet. There were lots of other people there holding cats and baskets and dogs on leashes. Dean's puppy skidded on the floor with excitement. There were so many other dogs to play with. Suddenly, the door opened and a woman came in, carrying a big cardboard box. Dean stared at it. What sort of pet could it be? It didn't bark. It didn't meow didn't even scuffle. Excuse me, she said. Is the special vet on duty? The one who knows all about exotic pets? Exotic pets, thought Dean. It must be a whopper giving the size of the box. But even Dean was shocked by the woman's next words. It's my python, explained the lady. It has a toothache. I can get that. Marius went... Do snakes? Oh, yes, they do have teeth. Specifically fangs. So how does she know that the snake has a toothache? Also, it doesn't say a toothache. It actually says it has toothache. I added the A automatically because that's how it, it feels like it should read. It has toothache. I'm guessing because its teeth could A. Eh? Also, nice illustration up at the top, and there's a lady at the end with the box. Mm -hmm. It does look like one of the boxes I've seen to actually keep pythons. St. George's Son St. George was very famous for fighting a dragon. But have you ever heard of Magnus, St. George's son? Magnus was a soft-hearted little boy. When he heard what St. George had done, he burst into tears. Poor dragon, he sobbed. And what about Mommy Dragon and all the baby dragons waiting at home? I killed Mommy Dragon on the way back, said St. George carelessly. And there was only one baby. I saw it scuttling away. Then it's an orphan, cried Magnus. That night, Magnus couldn't sleep. He kept thinking of the baby dragon. More than anything in the world, he wanted the baby dragon for a pet. So when the moon was bright, Magnus put on a warm cloak and set off across the plain to find the little dragon. After a while, he came to a rock. Behind the rock was a faint glow and Magnus could hear a sort of squealing noise. I've come to rescue you, little dragon, said Magnus. You can live in the cellar and eat coal, and when you're older I can fly on your back to the stars. 
and very gently, Magnus, son of brave St. George the Dragon Killer, folded his warm cloak around the little dragon and carried it home. How are you going to hide that from your father? Yeah, because he killed both of them. Also, that's a cute little dragon there, and he is glowing. Definitely glowing. And the kid's cute, too. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, something else these two books of children's short stories have in common. Here's Sunflowers. Yeah. But it's only half a page. Much shorter than Joey Knows Best. Mm. Mrs. Potts and Mrs. Winters were neighbors. They were the best of friends. Until the day they both entered the competition to grow the biggest sunflower in the village. On that day, Mrs. Potts and Mrs. Winters became deadly enemies. Each day, both ladies boasted about who had the best sunflower. Then one night, there was a big storm. In the morning, both sunflowers lay flat on their faces. We'd better pick them, said Mrs. Potts. Would you like them? And they were the best of friends once more. Okay. Well, similarities again. Growing competition, sunflower, ending's way different. Like, oh, we're good friends after the fact that nature knocked down these things we got so competitive over. I would think you would still be able to submit the sunflower, because is it just the bloom that they're being judged on, or is it the height of the stalk? Because it just says the biggest sunflower. Hmm. I'm guessing based on the image, it's the tallest one. All right, one more. Old Cat's Excursion Mrs. Partridge was getting ready for the old people's excursion. Her cat, Dorcas, yes, D-O-R-C-A-S, watched her put on her pale blue coat and best hat. Why can't I go too, wondered Dorcas. I'm an old cat. So when the bus drew up at the gate and Mrs. Partridge climbed aboard, Dorcas slipped onto the bus and crouched under the back seat. Nobody saw her. When the bus stopped at the seaside, everybody got out, but nobody saw Dorcas trotting down to the sea and flicking her paw in the water, nor did they see her steal some crab from the fish booth, and they certainly didn't see her climb back on the bus and curl up under Mrs. Partridge's coat. What a perfect day, purred Dorcas sleepily. Interesting, so he snuck on and snuck off. Yes. She wanted to go, so she snuck on. She went. She had fun. She stole from the fish merchant. She got back on the bus, made it back home, and nobody noticed. Hmm. All right, so that's another installment of Crazy Random Stories, a.k.a. Bedtime Tales, by Linda Jennings, illustrated by Hilda Offen. Soothingly read by Amber. <laughs> Soothingly, he says. Yeah, I feel quite relaxed. Today's stories were The Man and the Moon, The Leopard and the Fox, The Ass and the Frogs, The Bees, The Drones, and the Wasps, The Magical Birthday Cake, The Mystery Pet, St. George's Son, The Prize Sunflowers, and An Old Cat's Excursion. So if you are enjoying this crazy jaunt of randomness, of stories that actually take two minutes or less to read aloud, check below for an Amazon link. Just feel like shopping? Grab the Ebates link. Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Amber's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel. Hey, we have playlists. Check those out. Thanks again for listening. <laughs>